All right, welcome to another episode of Song Title Challenge, where the question is, climbers, how should you write this one, right? I think one of the biggest mistakes that uh, that writers make, amateur writers make, is that they just take the low-hanging fruit. They come up with this title, and then they try to write for the title. It's the first thing that comes to their mind. And this simple little 15 to 20-minute exercise is the difference between good and great right this is this is what takes a mundane song title like just think about uh, think about looking at uh in a hook book and you see the title the dance and you're like wah, wah, whatever <laughs> and then you know tony rod is like well if we did it this way <laughs> mm-hmm. and now it's iconic epic you'll never forget it it makes you cry it, it means so much so that's that's the deal this is a fun creative exercise climbers send their titles into info at daredevilproduction.com production is singular there is no s info at daredevilproduction.com put song title challenge or stc into the subject line so it gets into the right folder if you don't it won't and then i spring a title i pick a title just moments ago Hmm. Uh, i pick a title and then i'm going to spring it live to brent and our esteemed hit songwriter guest on the podcast and we have about 20 minutes to really just try to find five or six different conceptual angles to write this song see if we can find a cool way uh to make it work and uh that's part of the challenge because a lot of the writers that we've had on would be like well johnny this would be the time when i would say let's go to lunch or (laughs) what else you got but no we got to work this one here we're we're gonna work this shit right here so um Brent, you got any, it's a fun creative exercise. Yeah. It's not a co-write in any way, shape, or form. So climbers, if we use your title, use all of what we say, use none of what we say. We do demand an invite to the number one party. And I can tell you from my experience in Denmark that our guest today is on from my mothership and would also demand an open bar or at least just for, for us folk over here. For the- <laughs> I demand right. child care so I can bring my wife. <laughs> so I can bring my wife. There you go. <laughs> And we're going to need child care. We're going to need somebody who can handle like a force in nature. I thought you were yeah. going to say we needed child care for Gary. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Brent, you want to uh, do the intros here? Because I'm super yes. excited about our guest. Uh, just a quick note for y'all listening for this first time. Uh, we are going to go, you know, across the board as far as genre, if that's where the title leads us. So we're not being constrained. Normally in a, in a right, we'd be doing a lot of talk about, well, marketing, blah, blah, blah. How can this get cut? Or wh- who are you aiming for? Uh, possibly. But this is because we don't know the genre of who's listening. And so we're just playing in the sandbox all the way around. So hopefully this will be a lot of fun. Uh, our today's guest is from Kingston Springs, Tennessee, the daughter of a music industry legend, but has Earned, earned her own rightful place among the best songwriters in yes, town in the has. span of her career with several number ones and several chart toppers. Uh, she's currently writes for Carnival Music. Some notable cuts include Cleaning This Gun, which was a number one for Rodney Atkins, The Fool, number one for Leanne Womack with my buddy Charlie Steffel. I love Charlie. And mm-hmm. number one for Tracy Bird, 10 rounds with Jose Cuervo. She is the co-writer and producer on the new single for Scout Spear. That's S-P-E-E-R. It's called I Didn't Know. Marla Cannon-Goodman, welcome to The Climb. Hi, Marla. Hello. Hey. We're going to see y'all. Thank you for saying yes. I'm terrified. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's good to know. We haven't lost a man yet. Don't worry about it. We got you. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm not a man. (laughs) You may have found your first. (laughs) <laughs> you, you, that probably means you're even better off. So, That's right. That's uh, but right. yeah, the, I'm glad you go ahead and say you're terrified because I am too. Every time it's fun, it's low stakes, but you know, every time we walk in a room and if, if an artist goes, I got this title and I love it, but I don't know what to do with it. It's kind of that same moment of terror, but with like zeros attached. So oh, the, the funny part is when you hear it, when you, somebody says, I got this title and it's an artist and you're, all you hear in your head is crickets. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when Brent heard the, that in his head, he, he they wrote a song about that. <laughs> yeah, wrote a song called Cricket and got a cut. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> How about this instead? We're all here is Crickets. Let's write that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So uh, are you are y'all ready? Never ready? ready. That's the whole point. All right. So this comes from uh, Joe Bagalki. Joe. Hello, and Joe. So this title is... <clears throat> It's a little on the specific side, but I think one apostrophe can maybe, uh, 
Oh, if, no, we can go both really ways. We can go with or without the apostrophe, and it makes stuff happen. But the song title is "The Poet's Escape." Oh man, the poet's escape. So it could be possessive, like the poet's escape, like his escape or her right. escape, or it could be like the escape where the poets go. But I think there's so much. I think there's room for metaphor in there. I mm -hmm. think there's um, absolutely. I think yeah. there's a lot of stuff. We it just was kind of interesting. It pop, I thought, man, this is super specific, but it's like today it's just popping out more than any other stuff I was looking at. And so I just thought, okay, I hope Marla doesn't stab me in the eye with a lobster fork. No, see, I actually <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was like, what are you like, doing? To Marla, us, hey, Marla, she throws a drink in my face. I'm like, my right. wheels completely started turning immediately just then. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Because my first thought is, well, this would be an instrumental piano piece. Yeah. <laughs> And my work here is done as a lyricist. And I'm done. Drop the mic. Thank room. you. Boom. <laughs> All the piano you got the guy. The guy you Marla, grab the clarinet. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is an instrumental clarinet. Yeah. <laughs> it totally sounds like it could be. <laughs> now, yes. on NPR Radio, College Radio, The Poets Escape by Marla Canna Goodman on clarinet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everything I always never said. <laughs> exactly. This one would climb to the top, but mainly in the elevator it's being played in. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, mercy. So, off, off the top of my head, I, I thought like <clears throat> the poet's escape. You could you could color that to be maybe something like heaven. You know, just mm -hmm. just some perfect place to go. And so, therefore, it's not the possessive. This would be like where the poets go, and it's just. The poets are, you know, the most, they have the most like feeling, right? They're the most thought they have. They, we sort of romanticize a poet. And so <clears throat> where do the poets escape to? And, uh, and that would be so beautiful that you could see the girl there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you, could, you know, that's where I'd want to take you someplace that was so beautiful. Like maybe only, it could only be possibly described by poets or something, you know? Oh yeah. 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 I, it, the, it, it's funny. Brent asked me a while ago about, it, lyricist or melody and my I mean immediately as soon as you said the line in my head what popped in my head was and this is seriously what I heard because I have this crazy inside of my head but it was like there's a, a you know place out in the yard up between two trees you know a hammock where I'd go when I something I mean it's like that would be where immediately where my mind went mm -hmm. I would want to oh, yeah. I would want to be the, the, to me when you said the poets escape it was like where would I go to get away from what's inside my head? What I think, mm. and it would be you know, out there somewhere where you can actually. Oh, that just went. That oh, just like went that. like ten levels deep. That's really yeah. good because there's so yeah. much. <laughs> so on that, okay, on that, like I think about okay, you could do, um, sort of third person, like let like uh, talking about you know grandpa or something mm -hmm. like that, like some some person that the writer knows that they revere. Yeah, that they mm -hmm. absolutely, you know, just worship, you know, like a, like a grandpa. And it's just like, and he was a poet, you know, and you could describe yeah. like all these beautiful things. Right. Said. And, and that hammock, mm -hmm. the hammock was the poet's escape. Yeah. Or, or maybe it's a garage where he's fixing the car, you know, or whatever that thing was that, you know, for George Jones, it was a freaking, yeah. you know, tractor. Well, Terry, yeah. See that man, when you started, <laughs> when you started talking about that, you could be looking yeah. at a painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, and and the way Ooh. the words come out of a painting, and that yeah. could be the poet's escape that he puts someone down on a canvas, and you see the inside of his thoughts. Oh, I like that. It feels like you know you're on a road trip to like Ireland or something. And it's the name of a pub or something. I, oh, that would be a great yeah, place. Oh. On there, down at the poet's escape. That's one thing Johnny and I pulled out. We start learning these little tricks. Going, Johnny's it could like, be about what the bluebird. It, what if it's about a dog? And yeah. I'm like, what if it's the name of a bar? Then yeah, we can do whatever we want there, and that's the name of the bar. Oh, yeah, like the See, bluebird. It could be a, the bluebird yeah. could be the poet's escape, where oh, you yeah. actually go in there and you just let all of these thoughts that you've been having out in front of people and see what they think. All oh, these that's bluebird so songs. Cool. That would be so cool because, and it's just all about the bluebird. Yeah, which is so iconic in Nashville. Um, oh yeah, about how it shares that the music with other people. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And how many? How many? How many? How many new, like masterpieces have escaped? Out of yeah. the doors of the poet at the Bluebird, right? Yeah. Ten rounds would be one of those. Yeah, <laughs> nice. really? sniffed out the doors of the Bluebird. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's, that's where Tracy heard it, which is funny. Oh, that's awesome. 
Um, I was trying to think of if if I was doing it in a hard rock genre, what would mm-hmm. I what would I say? And, I would, um, oh, it could be a song about heroin. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Oh, what about yeah, like like those poets, like the Jim Morrison's and the people. Yes. That, I don't know what his particular you know drama was, but like <laughs> that's how know, they got away from it all. That's how they got away from it, and so it'd be that's Kurt interesting Cobain, as, a, like, as a rock thing, yeah. Going, yeah, that would be really cool. Like a, yeah, yeah. For, for like a drug song. Yeah. That, that, that's there's cool. there's been some great, and you know, okay, so just this has always just been so fascinating to me, but the really. Um, you know, there's there's the Lou Reed way, which is just dark and stormy, right? Yeah. Which is, yeah. Let's call the song heroin. That's uh, kind of my way too. <laughs> and then there's, <laughs> and then there's I forget who wrote it, but uh, the, the the ones who put like the supremely happy major pop melody, yeah, yeah, on a heroin song. There she goes, yeah, there she goes again. <laughs> Running through my veins and I just can't complain. And it's just like everybody's like, "Oh, it's such a beautiful song." It's like, man, that's the darkest. <laughs> hey, I just wrote one, and I no joke, I just wrote one with Tucker Bethard, and the chorus on it is like, "She'll come down with her best smile on. She'll come down like she ain't ever been gone. She'll come down, yes, yeah, she'll come down. She'll come down when she's ready." And it's all about her being strung out. Oh, but yeah. it's like in the first verse, it's like she's got, you know, with her clothes, she's she's mm. upstairs getting, you know, it sounds like she's getting dressed to go out with him, but she's she's getting, you know, she's just up there and she can't she hadn't come back down yet. Oh wow. I've never I don't think I've ever heard a song from that point of view, like when they come down. Like it's yeah. like looking high, but never She'll well, come down. That's interesting. That's I can't cool. wait to hear the rest of that. Marla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one's copyrighted in case anybody wonders. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You can think about it, but don't. Don't do it. You can, yeah, you can don't do it. You, I'll come get order. you. Exactly. Um, you know I, what? I, from too, uh, the Poets mm-hmm. Escape is um, if you were doing it, say if you were doing it pop, mm-hmm. I would that would lean towards what Johnny said about being on an island somewhere and you know, escaping with a, a pina colada margarita, mm-hmm. whatever, like that, in a different, whole different genre feel. Yeah, because the with having poet and it, it doesn't feel like straight up, you know, commercial country kind of thing. That just doesn't feel like the lingo. But if we were to try and shoehorn it in there, I would think it could be like, what are these escapes for different occupations or different types of people? Mechanics escape is under the hood. You know, uh, you know, an athlete's escape is out on the field. Yeah. You know, a musician's escape is those six strings or whatever. And a poet's escape is, you know, the, the blank page or whatever. Yeah. Or a book or you something sit down like with that. Those, you just, sit down with the page and you write it out. Yeah. Can so you, it's got to be about everyone's got their, their own kind of place. You call it the poet's escape, but it's really just about where different people go to yes. get away. Yeah. Do you, what about... Um, this might be more you, Americana. Can, can you, can you link that to... Uh, like to, to the Bible, you know, because the prose in there is mm-hmm. well, be, and there's, the there's a lot of poetry, poetry in the Bible. Well, well, and the thing is that um, I, I mean, a lot of our friends are very, uh, very spiritual, and mm-hmm. it's like when you—that uh, is really where you, we go to escape because our heads mm-hmm. are turned on all the time, and mm-hmm. uh, and I mean, we are actually poets ourselves, so mm-hmm. it's it's a. I mean, I know I write everything in rhyme all the time. I just rhyme. Yeah. Did you see? Yeah, I, did. I, I, <laughs> I did not mean to, and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> she was a poet, and she didn't know it. Uh, exactly. she uh, yeah. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I was thinking that just a minute ago about. For me, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I know Casey would. I, Brent, I know you would. Gary, my mm-hmm. husband, would go lean towards the Bible to escape something mm-hmm. too. Um, I get inside my head. I run mm-hmm. from things inside my head. I get quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, it's, I think what, I hide from them in there. What if, um, what mm-hmm. if the lyrics sort of lean towards, um, and this, and this just has a, a cool factor to it. I think if you can pull it off lyrically, but what if um, everyone's a poet? Right. What if mm-hmm. it's like an all inclusive, like, like, and say, what if you could like 
switch out the word just just not that you would do this lyrically but you know it, metaphorically if you're switching out the word like our escape mm -hmm. is the poet's escape right and so yeah. we're all poets in different ways right yeah like when somebody mm -hmm. does something well sometimes they say it's like pure poetry right yeah when they, right. which is like a, a euphemism for excellence right yeah and, yes um it's art yeah so it's almost like it the artist Mm -hmm. Artist to say, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's it. so like there's an artist, there's a there's an artist chef, there's an artist mechanic, that mm -hmm. guy that that your friend of your friend knows who just do can re, you know re restore your car like mm -hmm. right, you know that they have the love for that one thing that you know there's a horse whisperer there's and if a, you uh, yeah. if you did it like if I was writing it country and I was writing it like that I would I would actually like in the verse you could talking about a mechanic and talk about mm. how good he does it. Yeah. And how, you know, it's like he, he's a, and you could even say that he's a master at what he does. He's an artist, mm. you know, when he picks up the screwdriver, not that I would ever want to write screwdriver because it would be a terrible word to run. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but write that into that and instead, and, and set it up to where it's the poets escape. It's yeah. always yeah. every, and you might even go there. The poets escape is a, is a work of art. It's a, mm-hmm. If you're they're a master at what they do and yeah and i think um i keep thinking of like what's the but something you know these people are trapped but the poets escape like if there's a way of saying yeah. like the people yeah. that are uh keep keep a tender heart that yeah. have a little deeper well aren't caught up in this that or the other you know these people you know get maybe it's even the mechanic going you know for some it's just a job you know but the poet escapes like into the work and yeah. into what they're doing. If there's a way to do that, I think it'd be kind of cool. I don't know what the other side of that is. is saying, you changed it just then. You took the S off poet and put it on escape. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm messing with it. So wow. you could, true, yeah. The poet but the escapes poet, or, into there, into that place. Oh yeah. So if you went the I mean, poet Marla, escapes that. into that place. You yeah. have that, you have that leash. Like you can put whatever you want before it or whatever you want after it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, to change the meaning, like, I mean, it's like literally carte blanche, right? Like, yeah. Creative. And you can, if, if you make it more uh, plural, then it could be the poet's escape. Yeah. The well, I, but I like, but the I like the, what if you did like the poet escapes into that place mm -hmm. where all of this something in dreams, they wait and they do this and they mm -hmm. do that, you know, and it's, and that's where the poet escapes. Yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. You know, we, yeah, I think that's we, cool. We touched on this. I can't remember how the conversation went, how we got there, but I think it was right there in front of us. Like this could be a great song about our fallen musical heroes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, right. To heaven. And, and I guess like so there's there's yeah. really good, but then there's the then then there's the poets, and I guess the poets escape, and it's like a like a miss you kind of thing to kind to, of a, to, the good to, die to, young. Kind of yeah, thing. Man, like like the rest of us are Jennings, stuck down here, know, but the poets to, escape. Yeah. yeah, to Waylon Jennings, to to um, Keith, um, and see, that Waylon. works too. Yeah. If you say into that place right after it, if the, the poets escape yeah. into that place where the well, the, what if uh, that, rest of their musical heroes wait to, to mm -hmm. do it? With, oh, you know, oh, and oh, play in that band. The poets escape in their own head that brought us all this art, mm -hmm. and then I guess the poets escape yeah exactly you're doing verse one verse two one is like into their head the next That's one is like into that right poet there. heaven that yeah good. yeah johnny and i were thinking the same thing at the same time but you're yeah, like cool. you got it out there um yeah that could be cool and that could be depending on what musical icons you use that could go i'm sitting here now going god i wish that was my idea well <laughs> That's See, the fun a little thing song about title it. challenge. You'll take something that we're not so sure about and uh -huh. turn it into, like, like Brent always says, there's platinum underneath the gold. Yeah. yeah. You got to dig deeper. And that's what's fun about this is that so many of these titles, if they were in my hook book, I'd just like glide right past them. Absolutely. Like, not today. Right not today. But then, like, you're forced to spend 10, 15 minutes on it. Then you find something and go, oh, oh, there's the, there's something there. Yes. Which is for me the most fun and kind of encouraging part of this. It's going, I guess there are no bad titles. Because yeah. at first I would look at this and go, eh, eh, I don't like that title. Yeah. yeah. But then you figure out, oh, no, it's not bad titles, it's bad ideas. <laughs> and and, and yeah. on that note, Marla, so like much. one thing we forgot to mention at the top of the show was this is an incredibly cool exercise that a bunch of our guests have left going, all right, I'm going to go do this now. It's like a my own way to book, revive you know? new energy into your old hooks, you know? Yeah. Go in your hook book and that, because, because it, it it for whatever reason it inspired you to write it down. It made it to the hookbook, 
right? Mm-hmm. And you had some sort of feeling, right? So yes. had some kind of energy on that and you wrote it down. And then over time, it wilts like lettuce, right? And just if it doesn't make it to the song soon enough, all of a sudden it goes from this pile to this pile over here kind of mm-hmm. in your mind and it just feels that way. But going back in and Brent's done this and got cuts with it, mm-hmm. you know, to the super old hooks and just, you know, look out of 20 old hooks, pick one, mm-hmm. do a song title challenge on, all of a sudden you're like, oh, and it's back. Like, it's yeah. that, like that. that's like same devil for me. I sat on same devil forever. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't know what to do. I, I knew what I wanted to say and I didn't know how to say it. Yeah. And, uh, and I, but, but that was when I didn't throw out to people very often because I knew that I wanted it to be different demons, same devil, but I didn't know how I wanted to write it. And I, the day that we were sitting in that room with Brandy, I was with Brandy Clark and Haley Witters, and I was like, okay, this is the room I want to put it out in. Yeah. Cause you know that they're going to craft it. And that's one thing about co-writing. Some, I have some co-writers that you throw it out. You better know where you're going. Cause they're going to hit the gas, love the title. And then you're gone. And then you're like, what that, what happened? And other people are grinders and are going to like, okay, let's really simmer on this. Give it the time, really make sure. And you kind of learn those rooms that you're in, or at least I'm trying to go on. Yes. Okay, this, this is a safe space for this idea. That's not fully formed yet, but they're going to go on that journey with me to help figure it out. Other people are like, I better know where we're going. Cause we're going to go. No matter have yeah, I was writing yeah. with a couple yeah. people the other day and I had one and I was like, okay, I'm going to throw this out there. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't like it, if you're not all the way into it, just say so, because I know how I want to write it mm-hmm. and I don't want to, I don't want to waste it because I don't, yeah. you know, I don't like to throw them out there if I'm afraid Yeah. Mm-hmm. of where it's going to go. Okay. I got another idea. Um, this is another way to kind of say it. Like we've come up with this idea before in a song title challenge, but it fits on this title. And you kind of mentioned it, like, what if it was, um, you said, what if it's the name of a bar, right? Mm-hmm. But what if it's just describing all these characters at a bar, mm-hmm. you know, like in a, oh, in, yeah. a, in, a, in a, in a, um, in a Billy Joel, that's um, a cool way to do it man yeah. kind of way, you know, like they're telling a story about all these different regulars that are at the bar. Mm-hmm. And I guess they, this is just the poet's escape. Yeah, you know, this is where they come because they all talk, they all impart wisdom, don't yeah. they? And they all, you know, like, what what you gotta do when you're cooking your meat? <laughs> if it's a, you know, if it's a brisket, you gotta, you know, everybody's all everybody's an expert. What if the bartender is the poet because he's yeah. the one with uh, all the words? Oh, oh, that's cool. He's the one with all yeah. the answers. Yeah, because oh. the the name of that's the bar. Why they go yeah. in there because he lets them spill out. That's why yeah. the poets go into his bar because he lets them. Spill Poets need an ear. And, yeah, and listen. You know, poets need an, need an ear. ear. That's yeah. the line. Um, and because of the name of the bar, it feels like it's not a honky tonk. It feels like it's. That's why I first said like Ireland, or it could be the Billy Joel maybe kind of thing, or or like the Chesney Beach album kind of thing. Because you know he, you know he'll do stuff like that. It feels like that could be a thing. Because he had that whole album like poets and pirates or something. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that would be you know when my my commercial brain goes, where could we land this? That might've actually land somewhere. You know, then you start thinking of like, Oh, we could twist it here from this kind of outcome. Possibly we could just twist it here for this sort of thing. Uh, so climbers, we often do that kind of thinking. I mean, Marley, do you do that when you're writing? Like if you're just writing without an artist in the room, at some point you start hitting like, Oh, you know, this could be a so-and-so kind of thing. Let's just kind of tailor it a little yeah. bit. Or uh, You know, I don't, I don't do that a lot mm-hmm. because if I do, it tends up on, Sounding like a really bad version of something they've already done. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, you know, sometimes when I'm done and I'll be like, that sounds like so and so. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah. I mean, I've tried to do it a few times. Um, mm-hmm. one time it worked. On <laughs> yeah. That one worked. But, for, but, but, but yeah, for the most part, I just, I like to just see where it goes. I don't really care where it's going at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, who it's going to go to at the, that point for me. Yeah. I mean, for me, I just want it to be as good as I can make it. And, yeah. and that's part of the thing too. Cause I've, I've heard from a lot of different writers that some have success, like aiming and like project writing, target writing and mm-hmm. others like, no dude, it kills me. It steps on my creativity. I can't do it. I got to write it. And then later find out and people have success both ways. Uh, so I think it's important to kind of know yourself and like what works right. for you and you know, so. And, and yeah. what, you know, I think a lot of that too might be a, a bit of, uh, dare I say like habit, you know, like, or what's your normal groove. And if your normal groove is like, cause I've known a couple of rock star buddies of mine that were like, 
you know, normally I'm just writing like it's just from the heart. It's just all this stuff. And then it was really fun to do like a soundtrack because I had to now sort of, I had some sort of framework already there that mm-hmm. I had to work on. And that was a fun exit from what they were normally doing. And yeah. if you're so, if you're normally writing a soundtrack, then it might be fun to get in a room where it's just like free willy and we're going to do whatever the hell we want. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? And we can, and and either way, it's it's an un, it's an uncomfortable place for the artist to be, right? Yeah. For the writer to be, and I think that's what makes it exciting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have an idea. Head, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Marla. I, I was just thinking. I mean, I'm sitting here as you are talking, and this is something that I found myself doing all the time. Like you say one thing, and then my mind goes some completely somewhere else. Yeah. So while y'all were talking just then, I was thinking if you wrote it. The poet escapes instead of the poets. You could even do the poets escape, but I'm I'm hearing like the poet escapes into that place where the stools are empty, all empty, and the bartender waits to hear mm-hmm. what he had, you know, to hear that it's what something, and they know when he'll listen. You know, yeah. it's like that that whole thought of it's it's not a real bar, it's a it's a place in his head that mm-hmm. he goes to. Oh. To find, you know, to find what he, the, the, maybe even the line he's looking for or the, mm. the wisdom to, to in, put into that mm. song he's writing or what the I, poem he's writing. Uh, that, you that could book cool. in that too. Yeah. The way you served it up, you could book in it with the poet escapes to blah, 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 to blah, 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 blah. I guess that's the poet's escape. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, thank yeah. God for the poet's escape. Like you could yeah. book yeah. in those two things. And that would be kind of a cool Or even play. they call it the poet's escape. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So I have, I have two ideas that have hit me. Um, one is like the people that don't uh, follow kind of the muse and their art in their careers and stuff. It's almost like the muse will leave you and go somewhere else, mm-hmm. but the poet escapes, gives those ideas to someone else and you know, it will <laughs> find its way out. Like if you, the poet is kind of a, is the there, muse. Are you for the muse. Yeah. For the muse. So yeah. yeah. Um, that sort of thing where, you know, yeah, he sits in the corner office and he, and he chose this path instead. Well, you know what? The poet escapes and goes somewhere else. And that art will find its way out into the world. So that's hoity-toity kind of thing. Another thing is what if like the poet, and this would be, you know, the poet escapes out of this person that normally they do their nine to five. They do their thing that's bland, doesn't feed their soul. It's not, you know, to them, it's not their art. But then on the weekend, man they're the poet escapes and they are who they really want to be, <laughs> you know, whether it's the, you know, the guy or, under the hood doing that or the person that's writing and like letting that part out or when, boy, if you start talking about fishing, the poet escapes and he has his muses and that kind of stuff. So that could be something too, Marla. Oh, or, or you could do the poet escapes when he picks up the pen, touches the paper, mm-hmm. starts writing again, the yes. words that is something and da 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 da. <laughs> And that's how huh. the poet escapes. Yeah, oh, every now like and then that. the poet escapes. Like, you know, it's like most of the time they're not, but every now and then the poet escapes. Like, could be, you know, the fall in love thing and, you know, yeah. be, we, you know, with his girls or his wife or her with him or something that, you know, so the poet is the poet. With that, I that love person. that too. The poet escapes when he lays down his head and turns to the woman on the, you know, the, mm. on the other side of the bed. And yeah. yeah. What if he's like, oh, you know, like that would be beautiful. Kind of thing, oh, you, you do know? that from a female perspective where she's just talking about how much of like he's like a man's man, mm-hmm. you know? Like yeah. A mom, yeah. Man. It's like the poet comes out of him. Exactly. Like he comes out. He, he lays yeah. his head down on the pillow. The poet escapes. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember, uh, what is that in? Oh, of oh, Mice that's, and Men. That's hot. That's right cool. There. That is cool. Of Mice and Men. <laughs> Johnny said, that's hot right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, fan himself that, a little bit. I just felt like what it might feel like to be a girl in love with a man for a second. I was like, Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That's, called a, that's called dreaming, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> both sides. Yeah. I, I can bet my wife most of what escapes is a fart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad y'all can't hear Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um oh i was gonna say in that book of mice and men the one of the uh was it curly or one of the uh, one of the foreign one of the guys that worked he always had like he always wore one glove on his hand because he kept one hand soft for his wife you know because they're all doing oh, wow. manual labor and stuff and so for some reason it makes me think of that where like he keeps yeah that i didn't one think about that but yeah for her 
you know, which is pretty cool. That's what yeah, that's, because that's yeah, what it is. It is. Yeah. It's like right. he works hard during the day. He's the mechanic, like you said, or he's a whatever. Mm-hmm. But when he comes home at night, the poet, you know, when he lays down at night, the poet escapes and he becomes yeah. this. Yeah. And that could be like the vignette kind of thing about, you know, one verse is like him. Another verse is somebody else that like was maybe more literally a poet or, or has that other outlet that they become kind of more who they truly are. Uh, would be pretty cool. And that could go, you know, folk, Americana, possibly country. I don't yeah. know. Probably many ways you could do that. So not oh. hard rock. You could do a very Bon Jovi, never say goodbye kind of song like that. Rock yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you're talking my language. See, Marla, this is why we're friends. I love you. <laughs> I'm like, look at you. I can sing I, I, you so- any love song from the eighties. You just asked yeah. Johnny. I know yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love it. I'm with you, sister love. I'm with you. I sang them. I sang them. Um, so, okay. So here, real world story. Like this just hit me. Like, th- so Janelle's always like, you know, we're going day to day life and everything like that. It's like, you're always great. You're always like, I, I know you love me and everything. And it's always good. And you're, you're so sweet and everything. But then there's this moment when you get like two and a half cocktails in you. <laughs> yeah. you like really I'm done then. You know, yeah, yeah. Really love me. You know what I mean? Like, and not like I just all of a sudden I'm just like fawning over her, and and, and uh, the the poet escapes. You know, like mm-hmm. like after a couple cocktails, the poet yeah. escapes. You know, maybe something like that where it's like that moment where, where the words come, or or That's when you're really trying important. to pick her up in a bar. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, how, how, well, how much are you drinking? Enough till the poet escapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start sweet talking that girl at the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying things Man, that I don't mean. That. Yeah. We got I mean, and that could be there. kind of a funny song too, like a little tongue in cheek, yeah. a little lighthearted, a little fun, uh-huh. uh, which would be kind of funny. And then the poet escapes. And even yeah. if he's not good at it. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just well, like, the chances are he's not. What are you doing? Exactly. I'm looking at your tag. Yeah. yeah. I just want to see if you're made in heaven. Exactly. It's all those one liners. Like, you need to lock that poet back up. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want the poet to <laughs> No. <laughs> that's good. Marla, we got some good looks at this. This is fun. Oh, that's awesome. This went a couple of different places. I never thought it would go. That was yes. <laughs> Imagine that. Super cool. I love it. Yeah, you can always count them out with Marla. It's just like look. <laughs> Just buckle up, maybe get a helmet and some bail money. And- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marla, thank you so much for absolutely. For, for I love this. you guys so very much. This was for so fun. And, and and Brent, uh, Brent, one more time. Let's let's plug the new single. That's, that's yes. Awesome. So the new single uh, of which Marla is a co-writer and producer is called "I Didn't Know." It's by Scout Spear. S P E E R. And you can find it on your streaming services. Though it's even better if you go and plunk down some money somewhere. And Ava Page, I have Ava's single out. Oh, sweet. If I Were You. If I Were You by that, Ava Page. Did you go right there with her? Yes. She just sang that in my freaking living room two nights ago and just slayed everybody I, uh, with that freaking song. I mean, everybody was just like, you know, and so, I mean, like, D, D Vincent was here. Like, we had a whole sort of uh, Nashville Nights thing, you know? Yeah, I was, I was doing floats with my kids, so I didn't get to come. No, mm-hmm. there, there, there you go. So, um, we did that. So, you got a room full of killer writers and you know like when you really hit it and they're like damn like you know they're just like they're like like impressed and pissed off at the same time like that that's yeah a song. Like, you know, we off. wrote one we wrote one with uh dave finley and it's called um songs from a late night motel mm-hmm. and she just put a clip up of it and i haven't heard her sing it and i was like oh it, it is just it's so good she's something else yeah, yeah she's something She's something She'll she's get you in. Picking. She's been a better picker than me since she's like 13. Yeah, since she was two. <laughs> but I'm like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. She's one of those that'll get you impressed off. I'm so yeah. impressed <laughs> off right now. <laughs> that's a great, that's great. <laughs> impressed off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you all so much again for, for saying yes. This was super yes. fun, man. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. I would love to. Else. I love you guys. That's awesome. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. <laughs>